Hi, today we're going to be learning about multiplying with like bases when we're working with exponents. We're going to start off by looking at some notation things. Okay, now notation just just referring to the way that you write something. So when we are talking about exponents, you have something like this. We have 2 to the power of 5. So in this example over here, 2 is what I call my base. The 5 is what we call the exponent or the index. And the whole thing, the 2 to the power of 5, is what we are referring to when we speak about a power. Okay. It can be a little bit confusing because we're talking about 2 to the power of 5, so people often think that the 5 is the power, but it's not actually. The whole thing is actually the power, where the, exponent, the, where the 5 is actually the exponent or the index. Okay, so that is how we write our... This is When something is written like this, it's being written in exponential form. That's the notation for exponential form. Okay, then we also need to just quickly talk about some notation for multiplication. So now you already obviously know that 2 to the power of 5 means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now this is one way that we can write multiplication. Another way of writing it is like this. 2 and then a dot. 2 dot 2 dot 2 dot 2. So we can write a dot like this, which represents multiplication. Please note that that dot is not being written down at the bottom like um, a full stop or a decimal point. It is a dot that is up in the middle of the, the line of writing over here. And you can also write it like this. 2 in brackets and in brackets again 2 and 2 and 2 and 2. So there are three different ways that we can represent our multiplication by using the multiplication sign or by using the dot like that or by writing it in brackets like this. Um, so that is just so that you're aware where if you see the dots or anything like that, that it does mean multiplication. Now let's just take a look at what's going to happen when we are multiplying things together where both of the things that we're multiplying together have exponents. So here we've got an example where it's actually two examples that we're going to be comparing. So in the first example, I have got 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 5. And in the second example, I've got 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 5. So now, obviously, they look very similar, but there is a very big difference, a significant difference, in that over here, I've got 2 and 2 as my basis. Both of the bases are the same. But here, I've got 2 and 3 as my basis. The bases are different. So now let's just write out what each of these actually means. So 2 to the power of 3 means 2 times 2 times 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5, which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so now what's actually, if you look at it, we actually just have all 2s that are being multiplied together, which means that I can combine this all into one power, where I have 2 as my base, and I can say how many 2s are being multiplied all together. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 2s that are being multiplied together. Now, in this example over here, I've got, again, 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 times 2 times, but now I've got 3 to the power of 5. So it's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now, if I try and combine this, I have a problem because in this example, I could combine it all because they all had the same thing that was being multiplied together. But here, they are not all the same things being multiplied together. So I can't combine them all into one power. I can combine these ones back into one power again. So there are three twos that are being multiplied together. So two to the power of three. And then I have times. And there are five threes that are being multiplied together. So I can combine those into a power and I have 3 to the power of 5. But I can't combine the two of them because I did not have the same thing that was being multiplied together in the whole expression over here. It was not all 2's or it was not all 3's. So I can't combine them all and keep whatever it is as my base because there are two different things that have been multiplied together. So 
when we are multiplying things together, I want you to have a look at what happened over here where I had the same base. Okay, so in this example, I had the same base. It was a 2 and it was a 2. And my exponents in this example were 3 and 5. Now, when I wrote it all out in expanded form, so not in exponential form, then I was able to count how many 2s there were all together. And I was able to say, well, okay, there's 5 2s. I mean, there are 8 2s all together. So that gives me um, 2 to the power of 8. But now... I can skip out this step by saying I know that if I write this in expanded form, there will be three twos because that's what the three over here is telling me. It's telling me that I'm multiplying three twos together. And if I write this in expanded form, there will be five twos because that's what the five is telling me. It's telling me that there are five twos being multiplied together. So if I write both of them out in expanded form like I did over here, I will have three twos and I will have five twos and I'm multiplying those together as well, which means that I have this number plus that number all being multiplied together. So what I can do is I can take these and I can add them. And that is what gave me that exponent over there. So now we can get to a rule that we can use that we can apply anytime we are multiplying things that have the same base. Now, please note, it did not work when I was using different bases. Over here, I had 2 and I had 3. I could not use this rule. I could not say 3 plus 5 because if I wrote them out in expanded form, I couldn't combine them both into one power. It just doesn't work because I don't have the same things that are being multiplied together. Okay, so let's just have a look at what our rule is going to be. So our rule... is if you are multiplying things that have the same base and diff or, and they have exponents. They don't necessarily have to be different exponents, but they have to have the same base. Okay, so when multiplying powers with the same base, Let's just have a look at what happened over here. When I multiplied my powers that had the same base, the base itself didn't change. It stayed the same because it, I was just then saying, I now have this many twos that are being multiplied together. So the fact that there are twos didn't change. So I keep the base the same. And then I took those exponents, the 3 and the 5, and instead of writing it all out in expanded form, I can say I know that if I did write them all out in expanded form, I would get 3 2's being multiplied together and I would get 5 2's being multiplied together. So all together, there are 8 2's being multiplied together. So the way that I can get from there to there without writing it all out in expanded form is to just add those exponents. Okay, now there is a way that we can write this that doesn't take so many words. And that is to write it like this. Okay, now if you haven't seen letters when we are working with maths yet, don't freak out because it's not actually something scary that you have to be scared of. When you have letters in maths like this, each letter represents a number. It's called a variable because it can vary in what it represents. But in any given situation, the value that a particular letter will remain constant. So in this expression over here, all the A's will represent the same number. So what this is saying is I have an A and I have an A. So you can see I have some a power multiplied by a power and they both have A as their base, which means they both have the same thing as their base. Now that A could be a 2, it could be a 3, it could be a 5, it could be a 10, it could be anything. But what's important is that they both have A, which means that they both have that same base that are being multiplied together. And then we've got our exponents over there. Now the exponents 
could be the same or they could be different, it doesn't matter. But if you look over here, when I multiply those things, those powers together that have the same base, I end up with the same base still, so the base didn't change, and I add the two the two exponents rather. So I've got m and n being added together when I combine them into one power over here when I multiply together. Okay, so that is our rule that we're going to be using when we are multiplying powers that have like bases, like meaning the same, okay? So they are like each other, so they have like bases. Okay, so now we're going to go and do some examples where we're going to be using the rule. Okay, so remember when we're using the rule, we're going to keep the base the same. If the bases are the same and we're multiplying powers together that have the same base, we keep the base the same and we add the exponents. So let's have a look at our first example. So in this example, we've got 3 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 4 times 3. So now you can see over here, I have got three powers. This one doesn't look like a power. But remember, anytime you don't see an exponent, it has an invisible little one over there. So you don't need to write that one in, but you need to remember that it's there. It's not a zero, it's a one. Okay, so I've got three powers that are being multiplied together and they all have the same base, which in this case is a three. Okay, so our rule says that we need to multiply, when we multiply them together, we need to keep the base the same. So the three is not going to change. We're not going to say three times three times three is 27. We're not going to do that. Okay, we're going to keep the base the same, so it stays a 3. And then we add the exponents. So I have 2 plus 4, which is 6, and then plus the invisible 1. Please don't forget about that 1. So plus the invisible 1, and that gives us 7. So that's what you should get for that example. So now I'm going to give you some to do for yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these examples. Okay, you should be done with that, so let's go through that exam those examples. So in question A, we had 6 to the power of 8 times 6, to the, or just times 6, times 6 to the power of 5. Okay, so first of all, our rule says when we are multiplying things that have the same base, we keep the base the same, so it's still going to be 6. I'm not going to times the 6 and the 6 and the 6 together, it's going to stay 6. But I'm going to add my exponent, so I have 8 plus 1, which you can't see, but you mustn't forget about. So 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 5 is 14. So you should have got 6 to the power of 14 in this example. And please note, in the uh, questions, 
it says to leave it in exponential form so we can leave it like that we're not going to change it back we're not going to try and work out what 6 to the power of 14 is okay next one we've got 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 9 times 3 times 3 squared so they all have the same base of 3 so the base is going to stay the same and then we're going to add our exponents so we have 4 plus 9 is 13 plus 1 is 14 plus 2 is 16 so you should have got 3 to the power of 16 for that one and then the last one question C we've got 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 6 times 10 times 10 to the power of 4 so again they all have the same base of 10 it's going to stay the same and then we're going to add our exponents we've got 5 plus 6 is 11 plus 1 is 12 plus 4 is 16 again so that's what you should have got for each of those three questions okay now let's have a look at another example where we don't only have the same bases in the example okay so sometimes most of the time really you will have questions where you don't only have twos as your bases or threes as your bases or something like that and you'll have to deal with powers with different bases as well so let's have a look at this example we've got 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 7 times 3 to the power of 4 times 2 okay so now what we need to do is we need to group them we don't actually have to physically group them but we can if we want to but we need to consider all the powers that have the same bases together so just for now you can group them if you want to just to get used to considering them together but you don't have to always group them okay so I'm going to put my my powers that have a base of 2 first. So I've got 2 to the power of 5 times 2. And then I'm going to put the ones with 3 as the bases after that. So I've got times 3 to the power of 7 times 3 to the power of 4. Because remember, our rule only applies if we have the same base. Okay? So I can't work with all of them together. I have to work with the ones that have the same base together. So I'm going to work with these ones together and those ones together and I can consolidate those into one power and those into one power but I won't be able to put it all together into one power okay so now the ones that have the same base my 2 to the power of 5 and the 2 the base stays the same and I add my exponents because I'm multiplying so I have 5 plus 1 is 6 times then these ones also have the same base so they are going to the base is going to stay the same 3 to the power of 7 plus 4 is 11 and now I can't do anything else beyond that that's as far as I can go because these do not have the same base so I can't combine them okay so now I'm going to give you three that you're going to do for yourself and again I'm giving you two minutes to work on this
Okay, you should be done with those examples, so let's go through those now. So in question A, you had 4 to the power of 6 times 4 cubed times 5 to the power of 8 times 5 squared. So in this example, the powers are already grouped so that the same bases are together to make it easier for you. So we're going to go straight ahead and use our rule. So I'm going to take the first ones over here where they both have the same base of 4. I keep the base the same and I add the exponents. So four plus, oh, 6 plus 3 is 9. So I have 4 to the power of 9 multiplied by. Then 5 to the power of 8 times 5 to the power of 2. Again, I keep the base the same and I add the exponents and that gives me 5 to the power of 10. So that's what you should have had for question A. Then question B, we've got 8 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 7 times 8 times 3 to the power of 4. Now in this example, the powers are not grouped for us so that they are... Um, have the same basis together. So we are going to now go and group them. Like I said, you don't actually have to always show the step. You can skip the step when you are more confident, but for now we're going to be uh, showing the step where we group them. Now also when we do this, it's a good idea to do it so that you have the bases in numerical order. So from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to do my smallest bases first. So I've got 3 to the power of 7 times 3 to the power of 4. I'm going to write those ones down first because they have um, the smaller bases. And then I'm going to put my bigger bases. So I've got times 8 to the power of 5 times 8. Okay, now obviously you didn't necessarily know to do that and that's fine. But uh, in future it's a good idea to do that. It's just kind of good manners in maths. Okay, so we've got 3 to the power of 7 times 3 to the power of 4. We keep the base the same, and 7 plus 4 gives us 11. So we have 3 to the power of 11 times. Then 8 to the power of 5 times 8 is 8 to the power of 6. So that is what you should have got for question B. But if you had it as 8 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of 11, it is still the same answer. Okay, then question C, same thing. I'm going to group them, but I'm going to put them in order from smallest to biggest. So I've got 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 6. Then next I'm going to write my 3 over here, so times 3 to the power of 8. And then I'm going to go on to my 7s, so I've got 7 to the power of 3 times 7. So I've just rearranged them so that they are all um, grouped, so that I have the same bases together. And I've also just put them in order from smallest to biggest. Okay, so now I'm going to keep my base the same here when I multiply these together. So that's going to stay 2. And then I have 2 plus 6 is 8 times the 3 to the power of 8. There are no other powers that have the same base. So the 3 to the power of 8 isn't going to change. It's going to stay as it is times the 7 cubed times 7 is going to stay 7. But the, I'm going to add the exponents. 3 plus 1 is 4. Please don't forget that there is an invisible one there that you have to add. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question C. Right. Now, in the next example we've got over here, the uh, bases, you can see, are things in brackets that need to first be simplified. So, bed mass says that we have to do whatever's inside the brackets before we can do exponents. So, I need to actually simplify what's inside these brackets first. So, in this example, I've got 3 plus 2 times 7 minus 4 to the power of 4 times 9 minus 4 to the power of 8 times 2 plus 1 cubed. So Bedmas says I have to simplify all of this addition and subtraction inside the brackets before I can go and do any exponent work. Okay, so first I've got over here 3 plus 2 that gives me 5 times 7 minus 4 is 3 to the power of 4 times 9 minus 4 is 5 to the power of 8 times 2 plus 1 is 3 to the power of 3. And now that I've got it like this, I can go and I can group them so that I have the same basis together. So I'm going to put the 3's first, so 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 3 times, and then my 5's, 5 times 5 to the power of 8. And then I'm going to go and use my rule, which says that I can multiply things that have the same base, so long as I keep the base the same, so it's going to stay a 3, and I add the exponent, so 4 plus 3 is 7 times. Over here, I've got 5 times 5 to the power of 8, the base is going to stay the same, and I'm going to add my exponent, so I've got 1 
plus 8 is 9. So that's what you should get for that example. Okay, so now I'm going to give you two minutes to work on three for yourself. Okay, you should be done with that, so let's go through those three examples. So question A, you had 4 plus 3 in brackets cubed, times 9 minus 2 in brackets to the power of 7, times 10 minus 3 in brackets squared. So first we're going to simplify what's inside the brackets, so 4 plus 3 is 7 cubed, times 9 minus 2 is also 7 to the power of 7, times 10 minus 3 is also 7 squared. So now I have all three that have the same base, so I can just keep the base the same and add the exponent. So I have seven plus, or three plus seven is 10 plus two is 12. So you should have got seven to the power of 12 for that example. Question B, we've got four plus one to the power of five times six minus four to the power of seven times eight minus three to the power of four. So first I'm going to simplify my brackets. That gives me five to the power of five times 6 minus 4 is 2 to the power of 7, times 8 minus 3 is 5 to the power of 4. Okay, so now I'm going to go and group them so that I have the same basis together. So I've got 2 to the power of 7 times 5 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 4, and then I'm going to simplify. Now the 2, there's no other power that has the same base, so it's going to stay as it is. 2 to the power of 7 times I've got 5 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 4. The base stays the same, and I add the exponent. So 5 plus 4 is 9. And then the last one, we have 9 minus 3 to the power of 3 times 6 plus 1 squared times 3 plus 4 to the power of 6. And I simplify inside the brackets. That gives me 6 cubed times 7 squared times 7 to the power of 6. Now, in this case, I don't need to do any rearranging. I can go straight ahead and I can simplify. So that's going to be 6 cubed. It stays the same because there are no other powers that have the same base. Times 7 squared times 7 to the power of 6. The base is the same, so it stays the same. And I add the exponents. 2 plus 6 is 8. So you should have got 6 cubed times 7 to the power of 8. Okay, now we're going to go and look at what happens when you have negatives. So where you have exponents, but the bases are negative numbers. Okay, so in our first example, over here, we've got negative 3 cubed times negative 3 to the power of 5. Okay. Now you see over here that the negative 3 is inside brackets and the power is outside the brackets, which means that the negative 3 
is my base. Now, if the negative, or if there were no brackets over here, the negative would not be part of the base. It would just be the three that's the base. Okay, but because it's inside the inside brackets, the negative three is the whole base. So I need to treat it together. I need to keep it together like that as my base. And you can see it in this example that I've got a negative three to the power of three and I've got a negative three to the power of five. Both of those bases are identical to each other. So our rule says if the bases are the same and we're multiplying together, we keep the base the same and we add the exponent. So the negative three is going to stay negative three. And then it's going to be to the power of eight. Okay, but now let's just have a look at what this actually means. If you've got negative three to the power of eight, that actually means negative three times 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 negative three. Let me just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now we learned in our integer section that when you are multiplying negatives together, if there are an even number of negatives, we're going to end up with a positive answer. So if there's an odd number of negatives, we'll end up with a negative answer. And if there's an even number of negatives, we're going to end up with a positive answer. So this is actually the same as positive because it's an even number. It's positive three to the power of eight. All the negatives are going to cancel each other out because if I have a negative times a negative, it becomes positive. Negative times negative becomes positive. Negative times, negative times negative becomes positive and negative times negative becomes positive. So all of my negatives are going to cancel out. And then I just have three times three times three times three times three, eight times. Okay, so that's going to be three to the power of eight. So when you've got a negative as your base and you've got an exponent, you can actually just look at that exponent and see is that exponent even or is it odd? Because if it's even, it means we have an even number of negatives that are being multiplied together. And so it's going to end up being positive. And so we can just drop the brackets and we can change it to positive. But if it's odd, it has to stay negative, okay? So in this case, we have an even exponent which means we have an even number of negatives which means we have a positive answer okay Right, so now I want you to do these three for yourself. I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on this.
Okay, you should be done with that. So let's go through those examples. So for question A, we had negative 5 to the power of 8 times negative 5 squared times negative 5 to the power of 5. So first of all, all of the bases are the same. So I'm going to keep the bases the same, and that's going to be negative 5. And I'm going to just add my exponent. So I have 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 5 is 15. Now we want to get rid of our brackets, just like we did over here, but we're going to skip out the step where we wrote it all out like that. We don't need to do that because we can just look at the exponent and see is it, pot or is it even or is it odd. So in this case, it is odd, which means that I'm going to end up with a negative and then it's 5 to the power of 15. So the exponent stays the same, the base stays the same, but I'm just determining whether or not it's positive or whether it's positive or whether it is negative based on the exponent. If it is even, the exponent if the if the exponent is even, then it's going to be positive. But if the exponent is odd, it's going to stay negative. Okay. So then question B. Again, I've got all the same bases, they're all negative 8, so it's still going to be negative 8. And then I add my exponent, so I've got 4 plus 9 is 13, plus 1 is 14, plus 2 is 16. Now in this case, 16 is an even number, so I've got an even exponent. And so because the exponent is even, that means I have an even number of negatives being multiplied together, which means that my answer is going to be positive, so it's going to be positive 8 to the power of 16. Okay, and then the last one, I've got negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. It's all the same again, so it's going to stay negative 2. I add my exponents. 5 plus 6 is 11, plus 7 is 18, plus 1 is 19. But in this case, my exponent is an odd number, which means that it is going to stay negative because I've got a negative number of, or I've got an odd number of negatives being multiplied together. So it's negative 2 to the power of 19. So I can get rid of the brackets, whether it's an even exponent or an odd exponent, I can get rid of the brackets, but the exponent tells me if it's going to stay negative or if it's going to change to positive. If the exponent is odd and my base is negative, it's going to stay negative. If my exponent is even and is negative, it's going to change to positive. Okay, now we just need to be careful because as I said right in the beginning, over here, the only reason that I was able to say the base is negative is because it was in brackets. If I have something like this, negative 2 to the power of 4, it is not the same as negative 2 to the power of 4. These two expressions, sorry, yeah over there. These two expressions are not the same as each other, okay? Because of the fact that this is in brackets, it means that the negative is part of the base. But as soon as there are no brackets, these are separate. I've got negative and then it's 2 to the power of 4. So it's negative 2 to the power of 4. But over here, I've got negative 2 to the power of 4. That's different, okay? So in this case over here, the base is 2, but in this one, so here my base is 2. In this one, my base is negative 2. Okay, you see the difference over there. Because of the brackets, this one, the base is negative 2, but this one, the base is 2. Here, because the base does not include the negative, the exponent is not applied to the minus. Okay, now what that means for us is that it's not going to change to positive if the exponent is even. It will change to positive if the exponent is even over here because the exponent applies to the negative. Okay, and so because the exponent applies to the negative, the sign of my final result is going to be dependent on whether that is even or odd. But in this case, it's going to be negative no matter what. Okay, so in this case over here, it stays ne negative no matter what the exponent is.
But this one, it become if there's an even exponent, then it becomes positive. And if there's an odd exponent, it becomes negative. Or it stays negative, rather. It doesn't become, it stays negative. Okay. So, this could also be written over here, negative 2 to the power of 4 could be written as negative 2 to the power of 4, okay, where I'm showing the 2 is the base of the 4. It can also be written as negative 2 to the power of 4. It doesn't matter which way around it's written, they both mean the same thing, they both mean the same as that, okay? Whereas this one, negative 2 to the power of 4 in brackets, simplifies to 2 to the power of 4. Because the negative is inside the brackets, it, and the exponent is even, it becomes 2 to the power of 4. It changes to a positive answer. Okay, so that is something you need to be aware of when we do our next example over here. So in this example, we have got negative 5 to the power of 5, times negative 5 to the power of 7 times 5 squared times negative 5 to the power of 4. Okay, so now remember what we just said over here, that in this case, where the negative wasn't inside the brackets, it means that the base is 2. So over here, my base is 5. It's not negative 5, it is 5. Here my base is 5, here my base is 5, and here my base is 5. So all of these, even though this one doesn't have a minus, and these ones do, all of them have the same base of 5. Okay, so even though some of them look negative and some of them look positive, I can still use my rule, which says that if they have the same base, I can keep the base the same, and I add the exponents. But we're also going to add in the rule that we had when we worked with integers, which was if we're multiplying integers together, we first determine our sign by looking at how many negatives there are all together. So I've got three negatives that are being multiplied together. So my final result is going to be negative, because I've got one, two, three minuses. Then I'm going to keep the base the same, because they all have the same base of 5, I keep the base the same, and now I'm going to add my exponents. So I've got 5 plus 7 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 4 is, six, is 18, sorry. So I have negative 5 to the power of 18. And that is what you should have got for this example over here. Okay, so when you have an example like this, where some of them look positive and some of them look negative, so long as they are not in brackets, we can go ahead straight away and we can simplify it by looking how many negatives we have and determining if our final answer is going to be positive or negative based on the number of negatives that there are. And then we keep the base the same and we add the exponent. Okay, so that's what you should, have, that's what you should get for that example. Now you're going to have a few that you're going to do for yourself. For this, I'm going to give you three minutes to work on it.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with those examples now. So let's go through each of them. So for question A, we had negative 6 times 6 cubed times negative 6 to the power of 5 times negative 6 squared. So first, if you look at all of those, there are no brackets like there are in some of these other ones. In this one, there's no brackets. So I can go straight ahead and say they all have the same base of 6. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. But because there's no brackets involved, I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to start off by determining whether or not my answer is positive or if it's negative. Okay, so I'm going to say I have one, two, three negatives that are being multiplied together. So that means that I'm going to have a negative answer. Then when I multiply these powers together, they all have the same base. So the base stays the same of, and I, uh, it stays six. And then I add my exponent. So I have one plus three is four plus five is nine plus two is eleven. So that's what you should have got for question A. So that was a relatively simple one. Now the next one is a little bit more complicated because of the fact that there are these brackets over here. Okay, so now because of the brackets, you can't straight away just treat it as the same. But you have two choices. You can either get rid of the brackets straight away and then have it look more like that and simplify it from there. Or you can treat it as two separate bases where you have three and you have negative three as your bases. Simplify them separately and then combine them. So either way it'll work but I'm actually going to go the route of first getting rid of my brackets and then working like I was in this example over here. So for each of these I'm going to each of the ones that have brackets I'm going to see what I get for them separately. Okay so everything else is going to stay as, as it is for now. So I have negative 3 to the power of 5 times. Then over here the negative 3 to the power of 6 because my exponent is even it's going to be positive 3 to the power of 6. Okay, remember when we have an even exponent, our negative base changes to positive. So it's positive 3 to the power of 6 times three, uh, negative 3 to the power of 2, that stays as it is, times 3 to the power of 4 times. And then over here, I have negative 3. There's nothing outside here. Remember, if you can't see an exponent, it is 1, which is obviously odd. And so it doesn't change anything. So it's just negative 3. So I'm just trying to write it without my brackets. Okay, so now I can go and I can treat this the same as I did with this one over here. Now I've got just an expression where everything has 3 as a base. All of the powers have bases of 3. And so I can just uh, keep the base the same and add the exponents. But I first have to determine whether my uh, answer is going to be positive or negative. So I've got 1, 2, 3 three negatives being multiplied together again. So it's going to be negative because that's an odd number of minuses. And now I have three to the power of five plus six is 11 plus two is 13 plus four is 17 plus one, which you can't see is 18. So you should have got for question B, negative three to the power of 18. Okay, question C. Now this one is going to be very much the same as that one in the way that it works. I'm going to do it the same way again, where I'm first just going to get rid of my brackets. I don't like to have those brackets if I can if I can avoid it. And then I'm going to go and simplify it. Okay, so this is going to stay as it is for now. Times and then negative 4 cubed, that's an odd exponent, so it's going to stay negative. So it's negative 4 cubed still, but without brackets. And then this one times negative 4 squared. Now this time the exponent is even, so it's going to change to positive. So it's just 4 squared times negative 4 squared. Now I've got all the same base, so I'm going to determine whether or not, or whether it's positive or negative. So I've got 1, 2 negatives being multiplied together, so I'm going to have a positive answer, sorry. That's a positive answer. And it's going to be 4 to the power of 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So positive 4 to the power of 12. So ignore that over there. And then the last one, question D. Negative 2 to the power of 5 times negative 2 in brackets to the power of 6 times negative, and then in brackets, negative 2 cubed times 2 to the power of 4 times negative 2. Now this one over here, you need to be careful about what's going to happen where you have a negative and then the negative inside the brackets. Okay, so we're just going to focus on that a little bit quickly over there. But first, before we can focus on that, we have to get rid of, we have to sort out our exponents with our brackets over there. So I've got negative 2 to the power of 5 times, then, uh, sorry, 
negative 2 to the power of 6, the exponent is even, so I'm going to have a positive 2 to the power of 6. Now over here, bed mass says that I have to do anything that's inside brackets first. Now I can't do what's inside the brackets here. Then I do exponents before I can do multiplication. Now this over here is a negative 1, and that is being multi it's being multiplied by whatever that is. Okay, so that is multiplication. Multiplication comes after exponents. So I can't do anything with that yet. That has to stay exactly as it is for now. I first have to sort out this and I have to see what that's going to work out to. So I've got negative 2 cubed. Okay, now this is an odd exponent, which means that it's going to be negative. So I've got negative and then negative 2 cubed. Now you could write it with just... Um, brackets like this as I have over there or you could write negative 1 times negative 2 cubed if you want but it comes to the same thing it's negative and then negative 2 cubed times but you see the difference over here here the cube was outside the brackets here it is inside the brackets and then over here I've got 2 to the power of 4 times negative 2 so now I'm going to simplify I need to get rid of those brackets and then I can go on to my the rest of my simplification so I've got negative 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 6 times then I've got a negative and negative 2 cubed. Now we learned when we were doing our integer section that when you have a negative and then a negative, it becomes positive. So it's positive 2 cubed, like that, times 2 to the power of 4 times negative 2. And now I can go and simplify uh, my powers that will be multiplied together where they have the same base. So I've got, first of all, 1 two negatives, so it's going to be a positive answer, the base stays the same, and I'm going to have 5 plus 6 is 11, plus 3 is 14, plus 4 is 18, plus 1 is 19. So that's what you should have got for question D. Okay, so that is what we do when we are multiplying powers that have like bases or the same bases. We keep the base the same and we add the exponents, and don't be um, and don't forget that when you have negatives involved, you have to figure out if it's going to be positive or negative. If the negative is part of the base, so if it's in brackets, then if the exponent is even, it's going to change to positive. And if the exponent is odd, it stays negative. And then you can sort out anything that has the same bases by keeping the bases the same and adding the exponents. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.